Hi, I'm Sonny, I'm the founder of SIGSITE and today I'm taking a walk through Borough Market which was the scene of an infamous terrorist attack in 2017 where the terrorists killed 8 people and injured 43. So we're on our way to where the terrorists disembarked from their van, ran down a set of stairs and then they ended up at a pub and they actually killed five people right there and then uh, by slashing away with their knives. It's quite a horrendous scene. I believe the reason that they were so successful initially is because the attack happened above and you wouldn't have been able to hear very well the, all the commotion that had just happened in the vehicle ramming attack. Uh, and then when they got downstairs, it was a completely new environment. No one was aware of what was going on. Uh, and it took a few moments for people to realise that they're really in a life or death situation. So this is the Borough Bistro. And they was actually up on that level up there, which is where London Bridge is. And that's where the vehicle attack, ramming attack, took place. And as you can see, there's actually stairs on the other side, which we're going to go to in a second. If there's some commotion up there, you're not really likely going to hear it and know what's going to happen going to be happening if you're down on this level so I believe that's what actually what happened and why people weren't spooked at an earlier stage which allowed them to get five victims straight off the bat. This is the very location where the armed response caught up with the attackers and shot them dead. You can actually still see uh, a bullet hole in the wall right there. So the attackers moved through the marketplace uh, and they were slashing indiscriminately at anybody they could get their hands on. It took eight minutes for the armed response to actually intervene, but they were not the first police officers on the scene. There's reports of one of the officers fighting the attackers with a baton, as well as many civilians getting involved, because it's literally a fight for your life at that stage. So situational awareness is your first line of defence. You need to detect that threat at the earliest opportunity. Uh, by doing that, you give yourself more time and options. So what are your options? First of all, in any sort of knife attack, you need to create distance. Distance is your friend. So if you can run away, then that's a good thing. A lot of the times, you're not going to detect it until it's right in front of you. So we also have another option, which is a hard locking location. We use this in bodyguarding if we can't actually get out of the area. So you see all these shops right here. If I was to come under an attack right now and I have my family with me, I'll be grabbing my kids and I'll be getting inside one of these buildings, getting behind the door, even in a disabled toilet or even the front door, closing it, locking it and barricading it if I can and waiting out the attack in that, in that place. So what's the most likely thing that's going to bring you on to an attack like this is your hearing. That's why we don't ever want to hinder our sense of hearing. Things like headphones or on the phone. We want to stay away from distractions when you're in a busy area like this. And I definitely would call this a switch on time if I'm walking through a marketplace. So in an open area like this, if you was to come under attack in a great big space, then we can use rule number two, which get behind a barrier. Any little thing can actually save your life. So, for instance, a lamppost or a car, or even these obstructions here. If you can get the attacker on the other side, it's a bit funny, but you run round and just keep that distance between you. It's better than being in the open ground uh, with just nothing in between you. Also, anything can be used as a shield, uh, a handbag or a rucksack even a book. Uh, a good thing is actually a chair though because you can hold it up in front of you, use it as a weapon as well, maintain that space while you're always looking to make your exit in some way. So with my situational awareness system there's some really easy and simple principles that will go a long way and we're always looking for good arcs of observation. If you're ever waiting for a bus anywhere in the world then there's no reason why you shouldn't stand up against the buildings so your back is protected and now you've got only 180 degrees that you have to clear and all the people have to walk in front of you that means you can easily observe them. If you're standing out in the open then you're fair game for pickpockets and any other sort of street robberies and you just don't look as tactically aware as you could be. There's no reason not to do this one.
This is an old cut through I used to take in near Waterloo. And anytime you're going through a little choke point, a tunnel, or making a little shortcut like this, it doesn't matter if it's daytime or not, it's always worth just checking behind yourself. So you never know who may be following you up. Time of the day is a big factor as well. If you can avoid making shortcuts like this at night time, then do it. There's no point in taking unnecessary risks. So this bar here is Belushi's. Back in 2009, I was studying at university in this big city and I used to go here. I actually got into a fight one night and the bouncers threw us outside and I was standing here and the guy that I'd had a scrap with and his friend was standing next to me. And I found it a bit strange because they didn't immediately come after me. But after a few seconds of, of staring at each other, the guy came forward and we ended up fighting again, right here in the road. So we're standing up and trading punches and I was quite used to that back at that time. Um, but then, unexpectedly, he rushed me and took me down to the floor. So then I had him on top of me and he was raining punches down onto me. I hadn't done any jujitsu at that time, so I was a bit out of my element. After a few seconds, it felt like a 30 seconds or a minute to me, someone in the line here, I remember hearing a girl scream, he's got a knife, he's got a knife. And I also remember feeling a lot of hot water running down my head, like someone had tipped a warm cup of tea over me. At that moment, I realised that I was actually being stabbed and it wasn't just a fight and complete panic overcome me. So the reason I'm highlighting this is not to puff out my chest. I actually made a lot of mistakes that night. Getting into the altercation in the first place was the main one. But when I was standing outside with a guy waiting for a little bit, I should have realised that there's something not right about the situation and I should have always just cleared his hands, looked at his hands to see what was in his hands. One of the most common things in any knife attack is that the victim doesn't even know the knife is being used until they feel their, or see their own blood flowing. So I was lucky, I nearly lost my eye and I had a few stab wounds across my body, but I was lucky just to get stitched up and not actually get hit fatally. So just down here, we we're approaching the spot where the armed police responded and shot and killed the terrorist in the second London Bridge attack in 2019, November of that year. It was literally in this area here where the police responded and ended the guy's life, but not before he actually killed two civilians. A lot of pedestrians got involved in this attack in the initial moments, one of them using a narwhal tusk to keep distance and fight off the terrorist. This attack happened on the north side of the river inside of the Fishmonger Hall building where the attacker was actually attending a rehabilitation seminar. As you can see him here, he's just conversing with other people in there. There's quite a crowded area in there. He actually went into the toilet and he was armed with two kitchen knives, one of which he taped to his hand and he was wearing a fake suicide vest. And when he came out, he actually stabbed two people inside of that building and then he made his way over to the London Bridge. As you can see here is a bit of the aftermath. There's the famous narwhal tusk. So three men actually chased him over to the London Bridge area, which saved a lot of people's lives because they would was able to alert others to the scene and also they fought with him, as you can see here, for quite some time until the armed response arrived and ended the guy's life. So when the armed response arrived, the terrorist was actually pretending or attempting to clack off a fake suicide vest, which prompted the officers, uh, it's kind of a suicide move, to uh, shoot him dead, rightly so. These are the terrorist's final moments right when he's shot dead. So I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you love the content, please like and subscribe to my channel. And until next time, watch your own six.